Hello, welcome to Ethereum Mechanics video number 14. In this video we'll show that gravity violates Newton's third law. Yeah, Newton's own laws are inconsistent. Uh, this is for general audiences. Uh, if you want to know what Ethereum Mechanics is, uh, go back and check video number one. You'll learn who I am. My name's Robert Distenti. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. So in this video we're going to introduce Newton's third. We demonstrate that field at distant phenomenon uh, where fields always violate this form and we propose a sensible replacement which is compatible with field at distant models. So let's apply Newton's third law to two gravitational bodies and if we plug into Newton's uh, gravity model then the force acting on planet A due to the gravity of planet B will go like this and likewise the force on planet B due to A will be equal and opposite. So it looks like Newton's third law is good to go. There's a problem with this. Okay, let's suppose planet B is in orbit around planet A, or it doesn't have to be in orbit, it just has to be in motion. Okay, when planet B is here, its gravity wave is going to get emitted to planet A. Well, it's actually emitted in all directions, but let's just concern about the wave fronts that go toward planet A. By the time that gravity wave hits A, planet B has already moved, and planet B is going to pick up the gravity waves that were emitted on this side of planet A. And so the force on AB is not equal to force BA. They're disconnected in time. And because of this, field phenomenon will never, ever, ever, ever be in, um, will never satisfy Newton's third law. So all field phenomenon are in violation of Newton's third law. The only way they wouldn't violate a field is if fields propagate instantaneously, which is wrong, or if nothing in the universe are in motion. This is also wrong. Okay, so all field phenomena violate this law. So how do we fix this? Well, physicists like the forces of nature to be balanced, okay, and by a simple, a simple thought experiment we can show that fields are balanced from the point of emission. So let's start off this thought experiment with an Apollo space capsule call that object A, that's got a cannon attached to the side of it. Yes, I'm big on cannons. Cannonballs can theorize about everything. This is the only particle accelerator we need in ethereal mechanics. And then we have these annoying little aliens, uh, the object B. So when the Apollo spacecraft fires a cannonball at the annoying aliens, the action and reaction happens at the point of emission. Once the cannonball leaves, uh, there is no further effect on the emitting source whether or not the cannonball strikes the target B. Likewise with the aliens and their laser beam. Whatever action or reaction from emitting that beam is going to occur at the point of emission. Okay, So there does not have to be a balance from A to B and B to A. Okay, The field, the force of the cannonball, it has everything it needs once it leaves in order to do the job it has to do. Once it, it, it is no effect on A whether or not the cannonball strikes the target uh, B. So, but the problem is when the Apollo spacecraft fires a cannonball it's going to be pushed off course. So we have to fix that. So we have a balanced emission. We'll just put a, can, a cannon on the opposite side so we'll have equal and opposite reactions. And now that's how we can satisfy field emissions from the point of emission. So let's theorize are about a th uh, cannonball field. Okay, just like a gravitational field it, it has gravity waves going out, you can have a cannonball field that is self-contained, meaning that each wave of cannonballs has everything it needs to do to affect whatever distant objects those waves hit. And I'm going to show that's the same thing with gravity waves. Therefore, there does not have to be an equal and opposite reaction when those gravity waves hit object B or when those cannonball waves hit object B or the aliens or whatnot. So this is the idea of a self-contained field. In order for a field to affect a distant object without violating Newton's third law, the emitted field must be self-contained. Therefore, it must have all of the following to do the job. It must have energy to do work on the distant object. It must have direction. The distant object must know which way to go when it's struck by the energy because energy in itself is scalar. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into this Lagrangian nonsense that is the basis of quantum mechanics. It also must have velocity so that the energy can get from point A to point B or hit the distant object. 
So, if we consider that all fields are self-contained fields, then they are energy in motion. If they're energy in motion, then they have to be able to be described in terms of watts per square meter, just like light and radio waves are. So let's talk about our cannonball field emitter. If we consider that every salvo of cannonballs, every ring of energy that's emitted, okay, the mass of each ring is the number of cannons times the mass of each cannonball. That's the total mass ejected. The kinetic energy of that mass is one-half mv squared. The rate is, is the distance between each ring divided by the velocity of the cannonballs, and we invert that to get one over the rate. So therefore, if we divide the kinetic energy by the rate, the energy divided by rate is power, and that's in watts. But if we consider that it's a spherical field and we divide by the surface area of the sphere, then we can put the energy of the cannonball field in terms of power density or watts per square meter, just like light. Okay, as electro uh, ethereal mechanics progresses, we will develop the power density equation for each of the fields. Try it on your own, see how you compare. Here's an interesting question. If all fields are an emission of energy, then why aren't massive objects, which emit gravity fields, not losing mass like the cannonball field? You gotta see video 21. Don't miss video 21. You miss video 21, you're gonna be out to lunch. Okay, so what we have here is a temporary solution for Newton's third law. I call it the rule of balanced emission. This is preliminary. We need to talk a lot more about fields. We need to understand more about fields before we can write a final solution. But for now, we're just going to say the surface integral of the force times the differential surface area must equal to zero. This is preliminary. This is not a dot product uh, because that would come out to be a, uh, um, a real non-zero value, if, even if the forces are balanced. All right, what about an emission imbalance? I mean, if the field emitted from an object is not balanced, then it should necessarily accelerate. I mean, consider what would happen to the cannonball field emitter if one of the cannons failed to fire. So is it possible to cause an imbalance, intentionally cause an imbalance in a field emission to create a promulsion system? Uh, we have to learn a lot more about fields first. Reciprocal thinking, this is the whole basis. Uh, this is a, a, a recurring theme in ethereal mechanics. If an object is accelerating from externally applied force, would this then cause an imbalance in the field emission? Or what if an object were translating in motion? How would this affect the emission balance? Keep these questions in mind as we progress. Okay, so Newton's third law is not applicable to field models. Fields are self-contained. The rule of balanced emission replaces uh, Newton's third law for fields. Okay, and the rule of balanced emission must be obeyed for an object not to be accelerated by its own field emissions. So what's next? Um, number 15, we're going to wrap up Newton's third law by talking about inertialess matter. Uh, then we're going to talk about the antenna paradox. I recommend that for all of my antenna engineer friends. We're skipping 17. This is an introduction to the V3 models of new induction and new magnetism. The V5 models will be uh, disclosed at a later time. Okay, 19, we're going to have a history lesson on what the luminiferous ether was. Sometimes people put a little A there. Uh, and what the Michelson-Morley experiment was. You kind of need that to understand where we're going. Uh, this begins ethereal mechanics, where we look at, we do reciprocal thinking, and we're going to fix uh, uh, Hubble's law, we're going to fix gravity, we're going to fix a whole bunch of things in one short minute, and then number 21 is going to wrap everything up, um, and it's going to be a very interesting video. Uh, for all those who have contributed, I thank you very much. And all hail the great cannonball.